Welcome everyone, here's how you use your Google Pixel. It doesn't matter what model or pixel you have. For this video, I have Pixel 6, but it genuinely does not matter. You can still follow this guy. So first of all, let's learn the Android operating system itself. We have the home screen here. You can slide across between the pages. If you slide up, you're gonna be brought to the app drawer. So the app drawer exists because on the home screen, you can choose which apps you would like to see. And then the app drawer will contain all of the applications uh, on your Google Pixel 6, including the apps you don't want to be on your home screen. So for example, I have on my home screen the camera app. Well, if I want to remove the camera app from my home screen, but still have the camera app installed in my Google Pixel, well, you long press on the app, keep your finger held down, and then you're gonna drag and drop to where you see remove. I want you to release, you've removed the app from the home screen, but the app is still in your Google Pixel, and you can still access it via the app drawer. So that's the reason why you have the app drawer and the home screen. If you want to move an app from the app drawer to the home screen, long press on the app from the app drawer and then drag and drop where you would like. Now you have the buttons here in your Google Pixel. So you have the power button. This is used to lock and unlock Google Pixel. Do keep in mind that this power button, if you hold it down, is actually used to access the Google Voice Assistant, okay? So you can see for me, I do need to update my assistant, but for you, you'll see a little assistant icon, and that's a tool which allows you to use voice commands. If you want to power off your Google Pixel 6, you may be confused because holding the power button, of course, isn't gonna turn off the Pixel like you would expect with, let's say, an older iPhone. So what you do instead is you're gonna find power and volume up, and you just wanna click and release these two buttons together, okay? So let's do this together. Three, two, one, click release, and you'll see this power down menu. So you have the option to power off, restart, emergency, and all that good stuff. If you keep these two buttons held down, the case of power and volume up, if you just keep them held down, then that will uh, initiate a force restart. That is useful to know, especially if your Google Pixel has frozen or you see a black screen and you know, the Google Pixel itself isn't dead, okay? Then doing a full restart will usually solve those types of issues. Now, if you do a power and volume down together, so if you click and release power and volume down key together, this can be used to take a screenshot. It may take a while to get used to this uh, action here. I've had, you know, parents, they've had issues. Either they'll click the power button only and not to put enough pressure on volume down, or they'll click volume down and not add enough pressure to power. So just get your fingers, Add a lot of pressure, like squeeze the buttons, okay? At the same time, both power and volume down. Squeeze release, boom, and you'll see a screenshot will be taken. You do have the option to share the screenshot and edit the screenshot. And if you give it a couple of seconds, the screenshot will go away and it'll be saved to your Google Pixel. All of the screenshots, if you're wondering, are saved in the photos right here. You just need to tap into library. You will see screenshots and all of your screenshots will be taken right here. Now let's slide down from the top and you're gonna notice we have all of the notifications we're gonna see right here. If you slide, okay, so from uh, left, okay, you just slide to left, you can see that removes the notification. If you tap on the arrow, you can view the full notification and if there's an action button, let's say check activity, showing there was a recent sign in attempt, I could tap on the check activity right here. And let's see if another notification does that. I don't have another notification which allows me to respond. Okay, this one here, mark as red. So depending on the notification, you may have a quick ap action option right here. If you tap into the notification, it will bring you to the app in question. So this EE uh, text message will bring me to, well, the uh, sender EE right here. If you had a notification from, let's say your social media, if you tap on the notification, it would open up the social media app and same with other apps as well. Now you saw right there, I slid down one more time. So when you slide down twice, okay, so let's do this right now. Slide down once, slide down twice, you'll be brought to the control center. So in the control center, you have all of these quick action toggles. So you tap on the toggle to either turn it on or off. So I tap on the toggle here, it'll bring me to the Wi-Fi and the cellular. I wanna turn off, boom, turn off, stuff like that. With some toggles, you can long press. And once you long press, it'll bring you to the area inside the settings, okay? Now, if we go back to this area right here, let's say 
you're looking at this control center and maybe you want a quick action such as the hotspot, which isn't available by default, or some other feature you want to add into the Google Pixel. You're gonna see the pencil, tap on the pencil, and you'll have all of the toggles you can add to the control center in your Google Pixel. So in my case, let's say the extra dim, I want that one, I'll just drag and then drop into the higher area. And if I go back, you'll be able to see extra dim is now available. You may notice this entire time, we have this little home bar right here. Now I know how to use the home bar, but you probably don't, so here's how you use it. So let's say I open up an application. Let's say I open up the settings app. In order to exit the settings app, you just want to flick up, okay? So do a little flick from the bottom where you see the home bar. So when you flick, you are gonna release your finger, you slide or on the screen for a little bit, then release, okay? So let's do this flick together. Three, two, one, flick, boom. And it's a gesture, you'll get used to it, okay? Just flick up. Eventually, you'll be able to do it every single time without issue. Now, here's the deal. We open up an app, but it's still running in the background. So it's very important you learn how to access multitasking. So when we close out of an app, we do a flick up. But when we access multitasking, we slide up. Okay, so we do a slide, not a flick. We slide up, and then we hold our finger for split seconds. And I accidentally just moved to the app. So we'll slide up, hold for split seconds, then we'll release the finger and now we're brought into multitasking. So from here, we can see all of the applications in the multitasking. If you slide all the way to the right, you have the option to clear all apps from multitasking. If you want to clear a specific app from multitasking, you'll see the app right here. You can just do a little flick, boom. And you just want to flick where the app box is and that'll close out the app. You can also take a screenshot using the screenshot button right here. It will screenshot what's ever in this preview. And then select is just uh, doing a partial screenshot where you can just select the area you want to take a screenshot for. Now, here is the deal. A little tip when it comes to the multitasking is you'll actually feel a vibration on the back of your Google Pixel. And when you feel that vibration, that's when you can release your finger from the screen, okay? Boom. So you'll be able to access the multitasking very quickly, right? Like so. So I'm getting it most of the time. Now you will also notice earlier, I accidentally switched app. And how you do that is you see the little bar right here. You just want to flick from either left to right. Don't flick up, just flick from either left to right or right to left. And you can see you can switch between apps, okay? Boom, 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 boom. Just like that, it's pretty cool. Multitasking can also be used for a split screen view. So just make sure you've already opened up the apps you want to split screen with. So let's say the Google, maybe the Play. I'm just going to slide up and hold for multitasking. And then from here, you tap on the app you want to split screen with, the first one. Tap on the app icon, and you have the option to split top. And you can tap on this app here. And now we are split screening without issue. If you double tap the bar, the white bar in the middle, you can switch between which apps on the top and the bottom. If you slide up and down, you can change the ratio of each app on the screen. If you slide all the way down, you will remove the bottom app from multitasking. If you slide all the way up, you will remove the top app from multitasking. Now, in order to download apps in your Google Pixel, we use the Google Play Store. So you may have been asked to sign in to your Google account when you first you know, used your Google Pixel. Uh, if you have not done that yet, then it is mandatory now because the Google Play Store requires a Google account uh, or Google ID in order to download apps. So when you first open this app, you won't see this view. You have a sign in option. Just tap on sign in. And if you don't have an account, you will have an option to create an account in the sign in portal. So if you want to discover new apps, you do have the homepage for games. You also have the homepage for apps, movies and TVs and books as well. The search bar at the top will always be for apps and games. So you don't need to tap on the specific category in order to search up for the app or game you would like to access. Now let's take a look at these settings here. So inside the settings, we have the network and internet area. This is where you manage your Wi-Fi network, your SIM card network, hotspot, data, VPN, stuff like that. Connected devices, this is where you pair a brand new Bluetooth device, but you can also connect to devices via uh, NFC, stuff like that. This is where you manage your applications in the app section. 
You can also change default apps. You can view your screen time and other information regarded to apps. Keep in mind this also does cover games. The notifications area is where you can change your notification settings. You can change how the notifications look like. You have the battery area. This is where you can turn on features such as the battery saver. This will help improve battery life. You have the option to show the battery percentage and you will also see your battery usage at the top here and what you have left as far as time goes. And you will also be able to see a chart as well. Because my Google Pixel uh, was turned off for a couple of hours, I do not have a chart, but for you, it almost certainly will do. You have the storage here. This is where you can see all of the storage in your Google Pixel 6, uh, or any Google Pixel even. So I have a, a 128 gig total, and I've used 17 gig. And if you tap on this here, it'll bring to the Files app, where you can free up storage. We have the sound of vibration. This is self-explanatory. You can change all of these options here for media volume, which is music, call volume, which is calls, notifications, which is notifications, and the alarm volume. A little tip is if you click either volume down or up, you'll see this little notification bell, tap on it. And if you tap on the little slash, that will mute the uh, notifications entirely, and the vibrates icon will make it so vibrations and notifications will only vibrate. And of course you have the slider here, which you can use your finger to manually change as well. And in order to quickly access this area, if you just click or tap on the triple dots, you can see the same options will show up in the quick view right here. We can also change the display settings here. So you can change the brightness, but do keep in mind, you can also change the brightness at the top here. So it's probably best to do that. Adaptive brightness is auto brightness. So depending on the environment, if it's bright, the brightness will increase. Let's say you're going for indoors to outdoors. That's why you'd have that feature. You can change the screen timeout, a bunch of other features as well. You can also change lock screen settings by tapping into lock screen. One thing you may want to do is show always time and info. This is always on display. So when you lock your Google Pixel, you'll always see the time and date. Do keep in mind, of course, that will use more battery. You have the wallpaper and style. So this is where you customize the Google Pixel. You can change how the UI looks by tapping on these buttons, the colors. And of course, you can change the wallpaper. And you have the option for dark theme and theming icons. Now you have the options here for accessibility. So if you have accessibility needs, you can change them right here. This is where you add uh, you know, your screen lock, whether that's the pattern, the pin, or the passcode. You can also add fingerprints in this area of settings. This is the privacy area. So this just shows whether or not you want the camera access, microphone, stuff like that. And you can also choose which apps have access to you know, contacts, camera, etc. using the permission manager. You also have the location area. So if you want location on, you can have that on. And you can also see the apps which show your location recently. You have the safety emergency. So this is where you can add medical information and other stuff like that. You can have features such as car crash detection, etc. I personally never use this, but if, they, if you find it useful, then you might, might as well use it. You have the digital well-being. So this just shows you know, how many times you've unlocked your Google Pixel. This shows the percentage of apps you use. You can set up bedtime mode, focus mode. So basically, you know, do not disturb which notifications you want at which time. You can also set up parental controls at the bottom right here. This is where you manage your Google account. So you have the option to manage and you can change all these other settings for your Google account as well. This right here is where you can change some of the system features. So you can upgrade the software. You can change the gestures to buttons and can back up the pixel, stuff like that. You can also change the users as well. And then about phone, this just shows all of the information of your Google Pixel, IMEI number, uh, you know, the SIM card phone number, Google account ID, address, uh, build number of operating system, and tips and support. I've never used it, but if you need help with something, you can ask the Google community, and there's usually someone which will come there and help you out. So that is the basics of how to use the Google Pixel 6. You may notice that I've been using this little swipe gesture here. That is to go back, you just slide like so, 
once you see the arrow you release and you'll go back it may take a couple of times to get used to but you'll get used to it very quickly and it's quite simple to do you can also do it from either the left or right inside of the screen so thanks for watching see you guys later bye bye